Hello everyone, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to another edition of Missoula Live. I'm here with my co-host, Kim Anderson. Hello, and uh, I'm a board member with MCAT and also uh, Associate Director of Humanities Montana. We have stuff to tell you about, but the first thing we want to introduce you to is a concert from the Missoula Symphony uh, Orchestra. This is Red, White, and True. The orchestra celebrates the grandeur and magnetism of the American West with a program that features selections of musical Americana and closes with the bolero. Darko Buteris is here to talk about it. Thank you so much for coming. Hi, guys. It's great to be here. So tell us more about the concert. Well, uh, like, like you said, Red, White, and True, it's a concert which take, takes place on Veterans Day weekend. So and whenever that takes place, we'd like to include some of the greatest American music. In this case, it's Aaron Copeland, fantastic composer, uh, who is best known for the uh, beef song. Right. The beef <laughs> commercial song, Hold Down from Rodale. <laughs> right. So we're doing the four dance episodes from Rodale, which is the, uh, it's a, it was a, a ballet work that he composed in the 1940s and uh, was very, very successful and really is uh, connected intimately to the American West and even Montana indirectly. Nice. Uh, one of the, uh, the third movement, uh, which is called the Saturday Night Waltz, features an old folk song called Old Paint. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this mm -hmm. song. It's a beautiful tune and references Montana in the third lyric. And it's really, if you want to have a great Western folk song, you have to say Montana at least Absolutely. Once, right. one of the yes. verses. <laughs> so anyway, that's just a little cheeky connection. but. Uh, really a, a pleasure to celebrate uh, this occasion. And then the other thing we're doing along with it, we're offering tickets for veterans for free. So any veterans that would like to see the concert, as long as there's tickets available, they can call our office or, um, you know, it's, we don't have many left now, uh, but uh, so I think that's the best way to go about it is to call the office. It's 406-721-3194 uh, and they will get a free ticket for the concert. That's wonderful. Yeah. And a, probably a very good idea to call ahead of time rather than just going to will call at the, yeah. the day or the evening of the performance. It's been selling really well. As of, as of last week, we've only had about maybe uh, 300 seats left to sell uh, for the entire concert for two nights. So it's really nice to see uh, the community filling the hall and getting excited about this. Yeah, and yeah. a great way to uh, recognize Veterans Day and the veterans in our community. Absolutely, it's very important. What else is on the, uh, the concert? Agenda? So the other big piece that Joel mentioned earlier is Ravel's Bolero, which may be, I don't know if it's, it must be in the top five recorded classical pieces of all time, uh, made infamous by both Derek and the movie 10. <laughs> right. uh, but uh, really, a, it's a, one of those pieces which is really a treat to hear live. Uh, it's in a way, a first form of musical minimalism. Mm -hmm. Ravel takes two themes, um, they're similar, and they get repeated over and over and over again without the harmony ever changing. So it becomes hypnotic in a way. Mm -hmm. And it's really a powerful experience because it starts very, very soft with just the flute playing and the drum, and then of course grows to the entire orchestra, which is huge. Everybody's, uh, the whole kid in Caboodle plays, and it's uh, really a, a hypnotic uh, effect to, to hear this piece live. I, I had opportunities a couple of times to, to go see concerts, and even though as a, as a cellist, it's not the most exciting part of play right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I was very excited in the audience to, to be able to just kind of, it just takes you yeah. by... Uh, by the guts and leads you through it. So. Well, and there's just that constant build. Constant yeah. build, yeah. constant build. build. Oh, I can hear yeah. it now. It's haunting. It, <laughs> yes. The, the only danger is you'll like it so much that you'll be singing it for about a week. Right. So right. Disclaimer for everybody who's coming to the concert, please, uh, please consider this. No humming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the dates are November the 8th at 7.30 p.m. And the following uh, day, that would be a Sunday, is a matinee yes. at 3 p.m. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the Denison Theater, is located on the University of Montana campus, right next to the music department building. Right. It's Connell. Connell and Arthur. Right. Right there, hidden now by the Gallagher Business Building. Why in my day? And I'd like to say, <laughs> too, that it, people often forget this, that the music department building is shaped like a piano. Yes. But do you know I just learned that that is incorrect? It was what? not. I did. Raphael, There's a wing mi missing. Yeah, Raphael oh. Chacon said it was not purposely shaped like a piano. It was imposed on That's it by an, wishful an thinking. That's an urban legend. Oh, my stars. We'll ask know. Steve Hessler about it because okay, he's, right. he's out there. <laughs> you know, anyway. the, the shape is almost there, but I don't think there's a keyboard exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. right. 
Um, so uh, Saturday? Saturday, 7.30, Sunday, 3 p.m. And tickets available at MissoulaSymphony.org. Or if you're a veteran and would like a free ticket, yeah. contact the office, 721-3194. Well, it's going to be another great concert. I'm really looking, looking forward, forward to, to it. it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks. you, Darka, for coming by. Stay with us. I saw at least four guests in yes. the wings, one or, or two of whom are from the Hellgate Roller Girls, and one of them has a rude name. So we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll decide whether we're going to reveal this rude name. Are you going to be able to vote on Election Day? I know I'm not, but that's why we have absentee voting. There are a couple of different ways to register absentee. The first is to pick up an application, or you can download one online. If you download an application, be sure to sign it and then email or fax the application back to the Elections Office. After the close of registration, be sure to visit us at the Missoula County Fairgrounds to receive your absentee ballot. You can now track your absentee ballot online. Check out MissoulaVotes.com after you send in your absentee ballot to track it. If you're a college student or you're going to be out of town during the election, put an alternative address on your absentee registration and we'll send you your ballot to that address. Don't let life get in the way of voting. Vote absentee today. Hello and welcome to MCAT. MCAT stands for Missoula Community Access Television. We are a nonprofit group that helps the community get into broadcasting and communication. How? I'm not sure. We. <laughs> if it's too formal, I mean, people are just gonna be like, oh, that's boring. And then if it's too, like, oh, yeah, we don't give a crap. La di da. <laughs> Are you filming this? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> how we train anybody who comes through our doors how to shoot, edit, and produce videos. Whether you like to be in front of the camera or behind, we provide the equipment you need to get started. So come on down. Okay, we are back, and um, we're here to talk about Missoula Hellgate Roller Girls 2015 calendar release party. I am holding, and Sam's going to zoom in just to give you an idea. Now, this, this is, is last, last year's, year's calendar, yes. so don't get but too excited. What fun! Home. These are local that celebrities. So great. <laughs> and Athena is here, who did the uh, the photography for the 2015 calendar. Athena, did you do this as well? I did. I've um, been doing the calendar for six years, and we have done nine calendars total. Okay. Wow. And then also on the couch is Kelly Ann Dalton on the far end, and wearing the helmet. You can introduce this <laughs> <laughs> because you know we promised them the rude name. Okay. And you're going to give it to them. <laughs> My name is Knuckle Slambitch. I'm with the Hellgate Roller Girls. I'm a skater yeah. on the team. Well, welcome to welcome, all of you. Welcome, yeah. Thank you for waiting you. and, and um, getting in costume, as it were, <laughs> in gear. So we're showing you last year's yeah. calendar for a specific reason. That's because right. Because something is going on. Ooh, and here is, oh th is this a little it's taste over. of what's coming on this year's calendar, the 2015 yep, that's calendar? that's the cover. <gasps> Look at that. That is gorgeous. Wow. And the artist on that one is yeah. Annika Ayers, and the skater is uh, Darth Vader. That's great. Darth Vader. Yeah. Really? Excellent. <laughs> so what you guys have come on the show to highlight the fact that this coming Friday, so this show goes on for two weeks, it mm -hmm. repeats for two weeks. So if it's after that, you've missed it. But this coming Friday, November 7th, 5 to 8 p.m., there's going to be a release party for the new 2015 calendar at the Brink Gallery. It's at 1111. No, three ones. Um, West mm -hmm. Front. Correct. It's really hidden in the Hammond Arcade building. Everybody knows where the Mexican restaurant is. It's just past. It's just past on your way to Orange Street in right. that direction. And if you get to Montgomery Distillery, you've gone too far. Yeah, that's right. You can right. have a drink and then turn back. Up and have yeah. a drink. And, <laughs> and then buy then more like calendars. Yeah. Yes. These are totally great. And mm -hmm. the girls will be there signing them mm -hmm. okay. for that event. Um, and you can purchase them there all month that they're at the gallery. 
um, but specifically that night would be the best time to purchase them, obviously. And then other than that, um, Amazon.com. We have them for sale there. Okay. Well, great. And and tell us a little bit about Missoula Hellgate Roller Girls and what buying a calendar will do for the Roller Girls. Yeah. Well, um, purchasing the calendar will help out our league um, as far as getting us to travel to different places, mm -hmm. uh, compete against different teams, and um, help out the community as well. Um, we're going into our off season, but we will be picking up again um, after January this year and bouting other teams. Um, the the uh, calendar, the specifics on the calendar itself are that we have local artists that have um, decided they're going to help us out, mm -hmm. and they've done artwork pieces, and Athena can tell you a little more about that. And we have one of our artists with us? Yeah. 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 December. Yeah. She's got a December <laughs> December. December 2015. <laughs> um, I asked the artists to um, either bring work that they've already created, new work, um, work that they had been saving for a special time. Um, all the artists were different. It was really nice to get a big variety of artists type of mediums and then the work that they ended up doing. For example, I had two painters like Monty Dolak and Hadley Ferguson and they both came with completely different way approaches mm -hmm. to the project. So even though they were similar in mediums being painting, um, the calendar is very different. Monty Dolak's we projected and um, then Hadley's was like a composite of her painting the scene that we had already photographed and um, so that was really nice. Also there's artists like Kelly here and also Andy Smetenka that uh, usually work really small and um, they push themselves to work really large. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Kelly, is this your uh, a version oh, of your piece? Oh, that's great. Oh, my yes. goodness. So, yeah, turn it to Sam so people can, can see it, it at camera. home. Oh, there we go. the size that I work in, um, and we made a real-life version of this piece. So life-size? Yep. Yeah, wow. One of the roller girls playing one of my characters. And oh, that's kind of cool. What, what inspired you to get involved with this? You know, Athena contacted me, and I just really like using my art with local events and just to support the community, and the Hellgate Roller Girls are awesome and fun. How, How many Roller Girls are there? Um, skating Girls, we have around 20 to 30 right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're always looking for new girls to come and join our league, so we're going to be doing a big boot camp um, during our off-season to kind of get everything rolling and get more <laughs> girls in our door. and. Right. Yeah, um, on the league itself, I think we have between 40 and 50. So. Wow, that's, that involves Amazing. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's incredible. It is really terrific. So if people are interested and they want to, um, to try out, is that what they mm -hmm. would do? You know, potential? Um, yes, they can, um, they can just come on a Monday uh, between 5.30 and 7.30, and they can come down and talk to one of our girls, and um, they'll be able to give them more information. And where would that be? Yeah, um, uh, Eight Twelve Tool Avenue. That's where oh, warehouse is located. Oh, down the street there. Do yes. You guys have that like big, anonymous-looking, concretey thing. Yes, oh, it's yeah. very concrete and very anonymous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be a paper <laughs> company in there. Yeah. And I always kept my eye on it that's for cool. impact. That's I didn't you know? know that's where you were. Yeah. yeah. So we're kind of right across from DraftWorks. Yep. Right. And um, we are actually looking for a new um, venue to practice out of. We're losing our building, and oh. it, we'll probably be losing it at the end of this month. At the end of this month? Yes. You guys need something fast. Yes. So about, we're looking for about 14,000 square feet. Good Lord. Um, you know, 12 would hold practices. We're looking for something a little bit bigger that we can get audience in as well mm -hmm. and kind of make it our um, bouting grounds, too. Yeah. So. That's a very kind of specialized need. I hope. It is. It really wow. is. But if anybody's watching, you know, I thought immediately of Lizzie Judah and the Hive. You know, she oh, bought okay. UBC on mm -hmm. 3rd Street, just in from Orange. Okay. It's I was a thinking big, moving MCAT space. There. Great. It's yeah. huge space. You've got to check it out. Like, it was United Building Materials or something. C, Center. Know, center. And it's three blocks west of Orange and 3rd. Right okay. on 3rd Street. Kind of right on the... Yeah. There. yeah, but I'm sorry, you guys don't need to hear that. <laughs> what else? Well, we should remind them that the event is coming up Friday, 5 to 8 p.m., Brink Gallery, right by the Mexican restaurant mm -hmm. in the Hammond Arcade Building, 111 West Front Street. 
It's a little snip of a place, but boy, you'll have it hopping. It's going to be really crowded. It's going to be really yeah, crowded in there. It'll be kind of yeah, fun. But this is your chance to get not only get your calendars, but get them signed and yeah, personalized. Get your and Christmas what great present gift that would done. be. And yeah. we have merchandise, too. So. Oh, really? Yep, we'll have some shirts and stuff for sale there as well. So you can get your calendar signed, you can get merchandise. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. You can is it pricey? The calendar? Um, the calendar it will be fifteen dollars the night of um, the county release party, and it will be twenty dollars after that. Another so, great reason to go. Uh, pick yeah. up Chevron. I gotta go. I gotta take a break from here because we're doing a first Friday That's event. Right. I'll take your order and pick them up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I guess you want this back. Thank you. Well, thanks so much yeah, for coming I, on and talk thank about you for having it. Yeah. We're excited to see the calendar. That's for sure. Yeah, and then check out that space. Anybody Definitely. watching knows of space yeah. for them. Go to, do you guys have a website? We do. It's yeah. Hellgate. They, they put it up, I think. Oh, there oh, we are. Okay. So there we I are. Don't know. There we are. But what is it? Nobody at home can read that address. It's hellgaterollergirls.org. Okay. Shh, not hard. So if anyone has a space that might be usable, go to the yeah, website. I'm please. sure there's a contact us. Yes, there is. Um, yeah. Great. And there's also Hellgate Roller Girl PR director, 546-6880. Um, Luke Janet at yahoo.com. Yep. Jeanette. Well, oh, duh. It's, her name's Jeanette. Hey, well, <laughs> that might have something to do with it. Good luck with everything, you yeah, guys. Yeah, thank you for thank coming you. on the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll be right back, you guys, and then we're going to talk about Kim stuff and MCAT stuff. We yes. forgot to on the break. So we'll see you soon. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jessica. Did you know that you can vote before Election Day in Montana? That's right, come down to the fairgrounds and you can register to vote, pick up a ballot, and even receive an I Voted sticker. Here's how it works. You can take the bus, ride your bike, or even walk your dog over to the Election Center at the fairgrounds. It takes only five minutes to get your voter registration and even receive your ballot. It's so easy. If you have a hectic schedule, you can check out MissoulaVotes.com for our extended hours after 5 p.m. and also our Saturday schedule. Can't make it before election day? No worries, Montana has same day voter registration available. Come down to the election center at the fairgrounds on Tuesday, November 4th from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. to fill out some paperwork and get your ballot. Make sure you're in line by 8 p.m. Avoid the lines, register to vote early. Back. <laughs> we're back That's and we're right. saying it's warm. So it's kind yes. of a rainy day before election day when we're recording this live. It is. It's very autumnal. Mm -mm. And so I have a little bit of MCAT stuff that I would like to tell you about. Um, Scott, you can show the MCAT Facebook page. That's fine by me. And I'll narrate you guys along. So if you go like on, on Facebook, you can learn stuff about MCAT. It's where we put our newsy stuff. Up. And I just had a few things I wanted to tell you. Like there, Scott has been very good about putting upcoming shows on the day of when he does uh, Wake Up Missoula. I've really appreciated getting that in my Facebook feed. Right. So often, you know, I'll forget to go to the page, but if you're a friend, yeah. then on your feed I'll go, oh, look, that what happened last night in Missoula, let me watch. Right. I mean, it's, it, it says what's playing on MCAT mm -hmm. on a given night, like uh, some city band stuff is right there. Mm -hmm. But then last night, Scott went on the roof of our building, the former Missoulian building here at 500 North Higgins Avenue, and he got a nice, I don't know if you, you want to play that just for a second? He got, uh, that's the still, he, he took that view from the rooftop of the Day of the Dead um, that just transpired yesterday, this, the parade. Yes, the most Missoula-ish parade yeah. of the year. And also Ron Scholl was asked to record the mandala, is that right, or do people say mandala? You like mandala. mandala down at Karis Park where this parade ended up. So Ron's footage will be out later because he has lots of edit jobs to do. But um, we put this one up right away, Scott did last night on YouTube, so that people could, you know, if you That's missed beautiful. it, Look if you wanted that. to. Yeah, I like it because it's also a different view. Yeah. You know, that rooftop view. It gives it a, a sense of, um, you give, panorama you, or you something. You get a sense of the scope of the parade. That's true, too. You know, it's like gotten that. bigger all of the time. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's available, on, and we changed the name of our YouTube 
channel to MCAT television. It said oh. MCAT channel 7, and that was taken away from yeah. us <laughs> by the cable company, right? MCAT we are now, television is just, it's better anyway. Right, and we're on channels 189 and 190, so it didn't do. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention that Josh Minnie has left the fold. Josh yeah. went off to Bismarck, and we wish him well there. He's going to go to Dakota Media Access and work full time there. Damn. There he is, pictured and cursored by Scott. <laughs> and Scott also recorded a lot of Josh saying little phrases, so he has a virtual Josh Minnie. <laughs> so he could play, he says things like, You're right, Scott, or Sorry, I wasn't listening, and things like that. So I think he'll still live on, oh, wake up in Zulu in that capacity. Um, if you are interested and not put off by any of this, and you want to learn more about MCAT, you can do so by coming to our trainings and tour. That's the second Wednesday of every month. This month it falls upon November the 12th at 5.30 at 500 North Higgins on the northeast corner of Spruce and Higgins. You could come and visit with us, and we'll give you a tour of the facility and show you the equipment we have to loan and how you might work at MCAT. Yes. So that's my bit. And I know you said you have. Well, I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot. And I just do want to say I was so, I missed you two weeks ago when you were oh, yeah, I was in jet lag from Portland. Right. But I was so happy that I got to sit on the couch with Josh because yeah, that we was had a, a swan fun song. time. And oh, it did was, you? Yeah. Good. And it was, so it was, it was sweet to do it with him. Yeah. Um, so Josh and Bismarck, we miss you already. Um, nothing much to announce with Humanities Montana, except for a few things. Uh, first of all, we have a grant deadline coming up. If anyone out there is doing a project that involves the humanities, history, literature, religious studies, jurisprudence, philosophy, um, uh, the theory uh, on history of the arts, uh, including dance, then um, you might potentially be uh, fundable by us. And so our regular grant deadline, which is for grants of up to $5,000, is November 20th. There's still time. And I would counsel everyone, and I always encourage everyone to get in touch with me at Humanities Montana to talk about it before you go through the process of actually filling out an application. Good idea. So our number at Humanities Montana is 243-6022, or um, you can go to our website, humanitiesmontana.org, nice. and talk to us about that. And just a final thing, we just announced uh, at the end of last week our new Governor's Humanities Awards winners. Oh, excellent. There are uh, six very worthy citizens from around the state that the governor has approved, and uh, they're being recognized for their contributions to the humanities in a big uh, ceremony in Helena in February. I'll talk about it more as we get closer, but with the governor and with special guest Brent Musburger. Okay, then. <laughs> nice. That's all I have. Well, that's wonderful, though. I'd like to hear about those awards. The mm -hmm. People are always so happy, yeah. you know, to get them and so on. Yeah. All right. Well, Amy's been waiting really now, patiently. Sitting here patiently. While we did that. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. I've heard about several things I'd love to know about. <laughs> See? That's yeah. perfect. We usually do that at the beginning, but Darko had to go to a meeting. Yeah. Right. So, so we, we, were trying we stifled to... ourselves, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, for the, so the engine of art and could continue to thrive. So. Yeah, I don't know how that worked out. It's just the weakest. <laughs> right. We and always Joel's tried. Joel's in pain. You're in yeah, pain, aren't gosh. you? We'll see what happens tomorrow. Well, Amy is here representing Headwaters Dance Company because the annual gala concert is coming up. Do you want to tell people about it? Sam's going to zoom into the groovy poster. Yeah. So I think most people know we're a repertory company, so we're performing works by lots of different choreographers, although an inordinate number this time are by myself, Ooh, as it turns out, oh. which is pretty fun for me. Um, yeah. Part of it is that we have been choosing you know, themes and this year's theme is power and strength. And so it was kind of interesting to me to look at our rep and I was choosing pieces and thinking, wow, cumulatively I'm making a lot of pieces around this subject. Interesting. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> but of course dance likes to extol those virtues, I think. It's true, we like to you think know. that we do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, but celebrating the power and strength of the human of body. Of the body, yeah. yeah, for sure. And I think that's what the poster really is talking about, that. I know, that's so beautiful. 
But I think there, there are seven different dances in the concert, and um, I think trying to look at lots of different manifestations of strength and power. So how do you gain power? How do you lose power? You know, how do you, the strength to endure something, the strength to hold yourself together when you're falling apart. All that's right. a humorous one. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we're trying to look at all those different, you know, what does it mean? What's, it, what's the definition of power and strength? And are they interconnected? And can you have strength without power? Or, you know, does power need strength? You know, just all those. Interesting yeah, concepts for a dance concert. And this, as you've done in the past, you've used the Missoula Community Theater, formerly known as Missoula Children's Theater. It's on Adams Street and, and uh, East Broadway. Yeah. November 20th. 21st, 22nd, yep, seven, 7.30 nightly, and a Saturday matinee at 2. Yep. Now, um, would people, I can't remember if they put up your website. Do you have like a, a merchant portal or something on your website? Yeah, yeah. So people oh, can good. buy tickets online at our website. Yeah. It's headwatersdance.net. I think they had that to put up because I opened up a bunch of pages. There, there we go. Wonderful. There it is. Yeah, and so there'll be something right on that homepage that will guide you to tickets. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Also, Rock and Rudy's. Oh, great. Another. Oh, that's good. a good outlet too. Can you tell us a little bit about the Headwaters Dance Company and the history of it? Am I right? It's the only modern dance professional company in Montana. Well, not exactly. I mean, I feel one of my dancers, Joy French, who's danced with me for years on and off before going to grad school, after going to grad school, will be performing in this concert. She started a company um, called Bear Bait Dance oh. here in Missoula, which is different in this respect. It's also a contemporary dance company. They're awesome. And um, it's largely evening length original work. Mm. Um, she does, she makes a new piece every year. Evening length means about an hour usually. Yeah. Whereas we're a short, what's called short form company. So we tend to do multiple pieces of anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes. I actually have one that's one and a half minutes. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Don't blink. <laughs> Don't blink. But, so I it's didn't realize that, that was a distinction that companies made, uh, that, that companies would specialize yeah. in one or the other. That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's, you know, I think really originally most American companies were using short form and then Europeans were very interested in evening length, and mm -hmm. so that's come into our culture. And I don't know, curious, yeah. Both. Seems like ballet, you know, was more evening length. That made me right. Happy. Of course, that's yeah. true. Although when you think about it, think about the Nutcracker. Yeah, yeah. Up, it's made up of lots of little short pieces. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. Which of course is also true, mostly of evening length work. It's really lots of short sections usually. Right. And and how old is it? Dance company now? So Headwaters has a, I think of it technically as starting in 1993. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I knew it was a while. But it was different then. It was under the university and it mm -hmm. had a different name. It was called Motrans. Yes, oh, I remember, I remember yeah. Motrans too. And then in 2004, <laughs> we separated from the university. Mm -hmm. So we're Missoula's company and um, became Headwaters. We needed to change our name. But we've been the same thing, essentially. We've been a repertory company. I guess the idea there being that we want to bring in lots of different choreographers from mm -hmm. other places as well as here. So normally we're doing that. This time a little less. What yeah, for the gala concert. How many um, dancers will be in the evening? We have seven. Seven. Okay. And we have uh, Caleb Van Gelder is a local musician. Uh, played with the Josh Farmer band and is freelancing a lot himself. We'll be composing work for a new piece that's we're oh, premiering. Oh, wow. So that's interesting. Yeah, I, I was going to ask about that. So is it um, a, a, a uh, blend of recorded music and different composers behind each piece? Yeah, or? there's a huge variety, actually. So we have uh, the minute and a half long piece. It's called Bitumen. And it's to a, what would now, I guess, be considered a rap track, but it wasn't then, uh, by Oscar Brown Jr. Huh? And then we have um, a piece that's using uh, original music that was composed by Charles Nichols, who used to be yeah. oh, yeah. professor at the university. Um, we have 
a piece that is combining, oh gosh, when I think about it, it's a lot of local people. Uh, Drum Brothers what? recording yeah. and also something by, it's, it's sound effects from something else. But well, I think that's a big range. Terrific. Meredith Monk. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It's really big. Well, celebrating local talent and, uh, in terms of choreographers and composers, but also some of the best in the world in other places, this will be fun. It really, it sounds like it's going to be a great evening. Yeah. Um, the seating is limited, right? There's a 499 seats at the community like theater. I think 310. Less than. Yeah. Are the tickets pricey? 10 and 15. Oh, my goodness. So the answer is no. I yeah, the answer is no. <laughs> 10 students and seniors. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So the concert is coming up on November 20th, 21st, 22nd. That's 7.30 nightly and a Saturday Matinee too. So it's um, headwatersdance.org.net that they showed them? Yeah, headwatersdance.net. Okay. okay, it was throwing you off. You could just Google. <laughs> Actually, org will work company. too, in fact. Oh, okay. It'll yeah. both work. <laughs> and Rock and Rudy, also another outlet yeah. for tickets for um, the Headwaters Dance Company Gala concert. Well, Amy, thank you so much thank for coming you. over. Good luck with the concert. Yeah, yeah good luck with that. Yeah. And we'll be right back. I heard a lot of babbling at the door. Oh, it's going to be for the NAMI National Association for the Mentally Ill. Um, and Marsha Dick is here to talk about it. So we'll be That's right back. Next. I guess he decided we could do it, was, it right now. Right. We were just strategizing <laughs> on how to present Marsha Diaz. Keeping Thanks us on our toes. Coming. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> and that was you. You're just looking at footage from the Day of the Dead. Yeah. Right? So Marsha Diaz is here. She's representing NAMI, which stands for National Association for the Mentally Ill. There is a Missoula chapter. I think I put a, uh, you know, your internet. We website, the website uh, that has yes. contact information um, for people. And um, Scott will show that eventually. But Marsha, would you like go. to talk about the organization, then the event? Sure. Um, I'm here because I'm on the board of directors of NAMI. And this is NAMI Missoula. NAMI Missoula is part of the larger national organization there's a national NAMI, mm -hmm. National Alliance for Mental Illness, and then there's there are state chapters, and there's a NAMI Montana, and we're NAMI Missoula. And the purpose of the organization is to uh, provide support, education, and advocacy <clears throat> for people with mental illness and their families. And so we have a number of local activities right here uh, that, that do that. We have classes. Uh, once a year we have what is called a family-to-family -family class, and it's primarily attended by family members that have somebody generally with a serious mental mm -hmm. illness. It's a 12-week 12, 12 curriculum that's given at no cost, 
and the curriculum was developed on the national level. So the same curriculum is used throughout the country. And then NAMI also has uh, two different types of support groups. Uh, one of them is for family members and it can be for people living with mental illness. And that's Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock um, in the Providence Center, in the basement of the Providence Center on Orange Street. Right. What a terrific organization. I mean, it's, it's uh, so necessary when the, you know, support systems um, don't always exist in terms of um, even the medical establishment or the government, you know, what, what, what the government can provide. So to have this organization has got to be a lifeline for lots of people. Thank you. I really believe it is because with mental illness, uh, it, it still is an illness that people are not attributing mm -hmm. to physiological uh, dysfunctions in the body and that there, there's that base. I mean, there can be other things involved, but uh, because, of, because it's not recognized as that, there's a tremendous amount of stigma. And when there's stigma, people don't get treatment and right. they need to get treatment. And families need to go to the family to family because it helps them understand uh, what they're dealing with better. And as an, as an end product of that, the, the person living with the illness is healthier. Sure, sure. So. Well, you have an event coming up in support of NAMI. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we actually have a couple of events coming up. Uh, this Friday, we are having an art display at the Dana Gallery, and all of the art has been created by artists living with a mental illness. Wow. And I brought a couple of yeah. samples. If, yeah. Uh, Sam's on camera one for the whole <laughs> oh, We can see these beautiful pieces. This is a in. beautiful... Um, oh, Mark's pointed there at, at Sam. There you go. Sam? This way? Yeah. Can you see him? <laughs> He's behind that there camera. There we go. <laughs> this is a beautiful um, watercolor, actually, that was painted by a local lady, and it will be part of the art show. Gorgeous. Oh, it looks really yeah. great on the TV now. Uh, um, are there minimum bids? Are there prices that um, will be marked? No, there's all different prices. Okay. Good, something for everyone. Some of them are really about. bargains, let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But uh, some of them are more competitive, like what you might yeah, see. I can take show. that one, and you can show us another one. And there's, like. and some of them are not for sale, but people are displaying but them. They're being mm -hmm. exhibited. To, now, this piece is huge. You might need some help with this. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a large one. The wolf. A wolf, and believe it or not, this is a watercolor as well. That's oh, I can't amazing. believe that. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was, it was like painted, an engraving. And this was painted by a local man wow. here. And it is for sale. So. Oh, well, good. It's a bit heavy, so I'm going to... So how, yeah, yeah no, please do. Sorry. How many pieces are in the exhibit? Uh, today, when I was over at Dana, there were 45 pieces submitted. Wow. wow. And it was still open for submission, so we expect there will be more. That is great. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm really excited because uh, this is a segment of our population that oftentimes is very creative. Yeah. And has much to offer the community. And so I think it's great to, to recognize that talent. Absolutely. And yet, on the other hand, um, mental illness is often invisible. I mean, it, oh, you know, so. Absolutely. So to have an exhibit that celebrates the creativity and the artistic ability of people who also struggle with mental mm -hmm. illness is, is uh, you know, kind of brings out awareness and also shows another side of, of what people, a whole person. Mm -hmm. You bring up a really good point that it's, it's an illness that's often invisible, and uh, and sometimes it's invisible because people are afraid of the stigma. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Will the show be up at Dana Gallery just the night of First Friday, or throughout the month of November? <laughs> you know, I would have to check with Dana on that. I, okay. I'm not sure. So to be sure you get to see it, go yeah. on First yeah. Friday. We're sending everyone out on First Friday. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll have something here. And, it, and Ed Morrissey, uh, one of our board members involved with a group that's going to have an exhibit here. Roller Girls are going to be down on uh, the Brink, Brink Gallery. Gallery. And then people can just come right up to the Dana, which is on Broadway in Higgins. Right. 
Mm -hmm. It's, it's it'll be perfect. a busy night. Yeah. And and it's interesting. There there will be art, all different mediums like watercolor, oil, acrylic. There also I saw today there was some jewelry on the counter oh, wow. for sale, um, and a mask. So there there's going to be a variety. In fact, I'm aware that one person. I think is going to be reading some poetry. Oh, nice! Oh, I'm not sure if it accompanies artwork or not. Right, but right. She's she writes, so right. so it's a different the, expression, right? Mm -hmm. And this will be um, uh, so there will be works for sale. Maybe not all of them, but all of them. And you know, we've been we just are going to start plugging this right now. I mean, yeah. Buy local Christmas. Local Christmas. That's a great idea. And so, you know, you can get your roller girl gallery, you can get beautiful art and jewelry at the Dana Gallery, and you're not just supporting a local business, you're supporting an amazing local nonprofit mm -hmm. that does a great amount of good in the community. Yeah. So you could spend dollars for an excellent cause and getting gifts, another excellent cause. <laughs> oh, it, the gallery walk times are 5 to 8 p.m. Is that going to be the case Th at the Dane? That's the Dane? case. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I think this is a really great, uh, great way to raise money for NAMI and uh, showcase some of your constituents' work. Well, I would say that NAMI isn't really making money from these, but the artists are. Oh, That's good. important. And, uh, but NAMI will be having a fundraiser Oh. December 13th. That's right. It's Jan is to come on. When and we she's meet going again to, in two okay. weeks, Jan Barons will come mm -hmm. and talk. Well, you can throw in a... a I'll just put in a few sentences. Yeah. December 13th at the Florence Hotel is a fundraiser for NAMI. Great. And it's a holiday high tea. Oh, okay. right. That's a nice theme. With music. And they have the beautiful surroundings at mm -hmm. the Florence. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. So you'll hear more about that later. But, okay. Uh, but I would like to say that, that NAMI Missoula is, it really is growing in many ways. It's run by volunteers, but we do now have an office on Brook Street oh, in St. Paul's Lutheran oh, Church. Oh, that's right, yeah. Which is open four, four mornings a week. For Terrific. People can, we're building a library there and people can stop in and find out more about the classes and the support groups. and. Oh, that's really And nice. what we're doing in the area of advocacy, which right. is an ongoing thing. Yeah. yeah. And and Scott showed the website. But what is that? Do you know, Marcia, the number that's on there? Um, it was a local number and had a P.O. box as well. Oh, that's the mailing address. Okay. This is the NAMI Montana, I think. He's showing the NAMI Montana. Right. But um, if you Google it, because that's what I did to find a the local. Mm -hmm. oh, you'll see a Facebook. Page you'll see too. a post office box because we've had that for years, yeah, and that's that still a long our, time. that's still our mailing address. But it is kind of exciting that just this last year we've we've been given a space to have an that's office. Really yeah, an that's office really in the really library. Great. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. a great location. Mm -hmm. right there. Oh, I know who they can get a hold of is Dorothy Salmonson, Janet's mom. Uh huh. Mm. She's the one. Listen, she's a great lady. So if anyone is out there and they're shy, don't be. Because you're in good hands. <laughs> you Dorothy, Dorothy is the president of the board of directors, right. uh, and she is pretty much the founder of our organization yeah. here at the local level. Yeah, great lady. Well, I can hear Steve in the yes, wings. Yes, I can too. He's getting wound up. Well, Marcia, thank you so thank, much for coming. Thank you by. for allowing me to oh, be yeah, here you know and to, yeah. well, to we share. Well, we look forward this. to seeing the show, and then next month we'll have another wonderful. Yeah, event. in two weeks, um, Jan yeah. will come to talk about Terrific. the high tea. So next, Steve Hessel is going to talk uh, to us about the Celebrate Piano Series at University of Montana. And um, we'll be right back. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Thank you. Michael Jackson's Billie Jean.
Okay, we are back. You were yeah. looking at Anderson and Rowe, the glorious Anderson and Rowe piano duo performance on YouTube. And I, I looked at that uh, this afternoon, and they were playing a Michael Jackson tune, but in a very, very different way. These um, celebrated pianists are going to give a concert here in Missoula coming up, and Steve Hesla is here to talk about it. Thank you, Steve, Hi, for coming. Yeah, thank you. Yes. You know it. So I've got the poster. November the 19th, people, 7.30 p.m. at the Denison Theater, which is becoming, you know, quite the venue for musical excitement. Oh, yeah. Well, and as you can tell from the, from the clip we just showed, this is a very attractive young couple who happen to be brilliant on the piano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us how you came to, to book these people and get them to Missoula. Well, interestingly enough, they played in Dillon a few years ago. Wow. Smaller town? A uh, smaller town. They played on one piano. We have two, of course, here, so they get to be back oh. and forth if they wish between one and two pianos. But uh, it turns out that Greg Anderson has a brother in Billings. Oh. And this is uh, oh. fortuitous for us because they really are eager to come here, yeah. and so we managed to negotiate right. so that we could afford to have them come because I was hearing them uh, for my own purposes the first time I heard them was in Anaheim, California at the National Conference of Music Teachers. And I've been to as many national conferences as there have been in my lifetime practically, so 30 in my career probably. And I've heard many great pianists play and the 2,000 piano teachers that are there are sort of, thank you very much, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, and yeah. they went bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did five or seven encores, we all lost track, and they wow. just, they just elevated that audience and elevated music and they they are fab fabulous musicians they're not wow. just you know energetic kids they're terrific and so I, I i talked to them and i said never mind your brother in billings we want you to come to missoula <laughs> and um can we have your agents you know and i got on the phone the next day and we started a year of negotiating and finding dates and finding events for them and wow they're coming oh, they're coming great. from estonia germany Switzerland, Missoula. That's their order for that part of their okay. tour. And so we had to work around their European tour. We had a certain date in mind. No, oh, they won't be back from Europe yet. So. <laughs> well, it's great it's working out, though, for the yeah. Celebrate Piano Series. Oh, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Now, if people um, are convinced to get the tickets, they better get them, right? It they says reserve them. seating. Yes, reserve mm -hmm. seating. They choose their seats. $35, $25, or $15. That's pretty reasonable. So that's pretty yeah. reasonable to see. And the sound is great everywhere, so, you know, bring your... I mean, right. this is a beautiful, small concert hall to see no, this people is the of this Denison. magnitude. I mean, this is well, yeah, but, the, but it, meaning oh, well, Denison compared. for... A, it, yeah, for them. Yeah. To a giant hall yeah. somewhere. That's How old hall. are they really? <laughs> I don't they know. They look like, you know. Yeah, I know. They look kids. like children. I know. <laughs> I know. For They're me, they're kids. Attractive. Right. Me too. I wouldn't mind having them for kids. They're great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two ways to get tickets. Um, call UM Arts Box Office 243 4581. 243 4581. Or thegrizzticks.com. Very easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. is kind of a great quote you have, though. The Anderson Row Piano Duo's performance was something rarely encountered in concert going. They have a truly deep artistry, massive range of sound, and impeccable technique. Imagine two pianos on steroids. Who says classical musicians are <laughs> stuffy? Yeah, they, they are really uh, quite amazing. We're really pleased that on the day before this show, uh, that was part of the negotiation, they are going to present for 1,400 fifth graders, 1,400 fifth graders wow. get to come and hear them. And this is... That's almost like a gross of fifth graders. <laughs> I know. 1,440. <laughs> One, we should have 14,400. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's lucky. And the kids are, the kids are so excited. People. They're coming from R. Lee and Hamilton yeah. and everywhere and Darby and... That's great. Missoula. Is it part of that fifth grade art experience they do every year? Or you guys just no, call them a, together? Well, it's all part of something, but the mm. Missoula County Public Schools, part of it, that's 600 of the kids of the 1,400, 600 yeah. from the Missoula schools in the, in the county public schools. And that part is part of the Kennedy Center's Any Given Child. Oh, this is the yeah. exciting new art this is fabulous. that we're going to get to take. Oh. Yeah, it's right on the poster, people at home. Right. It says, Ensuring the Arts for Any Given right. Child, Missoula, Montana, and then the Kennedy Center. And we only that. have a few minutes left, so I want to make sure we get all the information yeah. in. And this is part of the Celebrate Piano Series, correct? Yes, Celebrate Piano Series. 
And uh, it is November 19th mm -hmm. at 7.30 p.m. Now, and the people could say, give me a $35 seat, give me a $25 or a $15. And, and if and they go Grizz, yes, that's very easy. If they go griztix.com, there's a little seat blurb chart. that says, choose your seats. Right. Choose yeah. your seats. Let okay. me choose my own seats. And so you can get them wherever you want, and the price is according to the, where they choose. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So it's affordable for everyone. Steve, thank you so much yeah. for waiting to come on. I know. Yeah. And then I wanted to mention this so before you go, oh, yeah. because yeah, this is going to be pretty this is amazing. amazing. Um, the the Vienna Boys <laughs> Choir at St. Anthony's um, Church, which is a beautiful venue. You know, years ago, um, MCAT recorded uh, Misa Gaia. I can't think of mm. Paul Winter Group. Oh, okay. you know, remember yeah. the Paul Winter Group? Yes. Yeah. Makes me think of hardwood floors and ferns in the 1970s. Yeah. <laughs> but it was very sweet. And, and I got to experience the church the as a, a musical yeah. performance thing. It's really wonderful. So that is November the 12th, and, and tickets. Uh, you go about it pretty much the same way. The thirty dollars general. Christix.com. Yeah, Christix.com. Fifteen dollars students at seven thirty on a Wednesday. Very that should be pretty amazing. It's a sure. busy week. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Good things. <laughs> yeah, good going. Well, thank you for bringing all this music for us. Yeah, really. <laughs> Our pleasure. Yeah. UM Music you. Department people. Yeah. Thank you for having yeah. us. You know it. Okay, so we do have we one, one more guest. I didn't know. Whether someone would come from Missoula Indian Center, and I assume that's who's in the wings, Sam says yes. Um, and they're here to talk about an opportunity to sign up under the Affordable Care Act. It's going to be um, an all afternoon event, so we'll be right back with the details. Stay with us. I'm Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. For the last 30 years, the Montana Hope Project has been granting wishes to Montana children who face life-threatening illnesses. I'm Montana Hope. To make a donation and help their wishes come true, please visit MontanaHope.org. We are Montana Hope! Let's say you were watching one of MCAD's programs not too long ago. If you or anyone you know wants a copy of our wonderful programming, Call us, 542-6228, or email us at mcat.org. Ask for a dub request and tell us what you want. We'll get it to you. Walk-ins welcome. Just go to 500 North Higgins, Suite 105, just off Spruce. And we're back. We are back with Dana Kingfisher and Troy L. Wilson Bird. They are here both from Missoula Indian Center to talk about a healthcare enrollment event. Thanks for coming over. Yes, yeah, and for waiting you. patiently. Yeah, you had to wait to the end. So we do the people in order that they arrived. Mm -hmm. But anyway, on to the event. What can you tell people about it? Yes, we're having a um, Affordable Care Act event, which is for the community, but specifically the Indian community, but it's for all uh, Missoula community to um, talk about the options for the vigil or the Affordable Care Act and mm -hmm. the insurance marketplace. And then um, as unique of uh, federally, federal members, our members of a federally recognized tribe, we have options to either choose the Indian Health Service or enter into the marketplace. Oh. Interesting. So yeah. we have a choice. Mm -hmm. um, we won't be penalized for not right. having the health insurance through the marketplace. So this is going to be uh, a, an afternoon yes. long workshop. Saturday, to help November fifteenth. Understand 15th. their options. Uh, you, there'll be people to consult with about mm -hmm. um, what various choices they might have. Yes, we'll have certified application counselors on site Great. from MIC, from St. Pat's Hospital, and from Partnership Health Center to sign people up if they are interested in, in getting the insurance. Oh, that is great. And they are serious about getting you people there. Lunch is provided from 1 to 2. Nice. Um, 12 to 1. Um, chances to win great prizes. Youth activities for all ages. So if you have to babysit or something, right, don't right. be shy. Bring the you, kids. You bring if you kids. Mm -hmm. don't have a setter, don't let um, that stop you. Turkeys for first 15 participants. Are you kidding That's me? an icebreaker right there, right? <laughs> that is turkeys awesome. Turkeys for first 15 <laughs> participants. Wow. I know. If you want more information, 
Call 829-9515. And this is going on at the Missoula Fairgrounds at the Home Arts Building. And yeah. that is that first build, the big building when you write, when you pull is in. I, is mm -hmm. that the one it is? The, the big one just as you're pulling mm -hmm. in off south. Gee, yeah, you sound right, like right. me. Like, I always want to direct I, I, people. You have turned me into this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you mean it's that really big, tall, long one? Right as you go in. Mm -hmm. The Marsda right. thing where they have the dances yeah. and the quilt and went yes. quilt shows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. I think so. Has a really good hardwood floor. Anyway, this is um, absolutely a fabulous idea mm -hmm. and a great service to the whole community because I don't, I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people who mm -hmm. still haven't, they keep meaning to, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they still haven't signed up for the Affordable Care Act and they would be so much better off if they did. Yeah, and I have insurance through the Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. and I don't have to pay co-pays. I get the 10 health, 10 essential health benefits, um, and a number of other sure. services. Yeah. If someone said, like, they already have um, coverage, um, what would the advantage be to come to the event to learn more? You know, if they, if they said, well, I, I already have coverage, I don't need it. How do you persuade them to come and learn more? Well, we're encouraging all uh, members of a federally recognized tribe to still come fill out the exemption form, even if they still have health insurance, mm -hmm. just to cover all your bases. And we'll have the exemption forms there on site. But if you're an enrolled member, you, you want to come there, even if you have the health insurance, to right. fill the exemption. Plus, now. free turkey. First 15, <laughs> no. That's the first 15. But also, I think, I mean, Having more information is just a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you may not have the best health care you are eligible for. So well, unfortunately, is... if your employer is offering health insurance, yeah. you don't qualify. Yes. Right. But it's, it's good to know all of your options. And there could be also other family members. The poster says bring dates of birth and Social Security numbers on all household members. That way you'd be prepared you could, to enroll them. Right. You, you could, know. Yeah. You could help out your uncle or, you know, your mm -hmm. mother. It'd be great. Grandma. Like, I'm not doing any of that stuff, you know. <laughs> Just sign her up. You wouldn't know the difference. Um, could we have a little more time? I'm wondering if you could tell people more about the Missoula Indian Center. Well, the yeah. Missoula Indian Center is a nonprofit organization that has been providing um, community services for the Indian community since 1970. So we've been around for been around a long time. Yeah. Wow. And we um, currently provide um, basic health care for our Indian community, but we also provide um, outpatient um, chemical dependency services for all of the community, for Indians and non-Indians. And we're a state certified chemical dependency program. And um, yeah, so we provide a lot of services to the 4,500 natives that live here in yeah. Missoula. Great organization. Mm -hmm. And people know it's out the fort. No, we're not no. at the fort anymore. See, I don't know that it's not at the fort. Where'd you oh, guys move this is to? A <laughs> <laughs> we moved to um, 830 West Central, which is between the Women's Club and behind Joanne Fabrics. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. right on the corner. In the oh, you're right in the heart of town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. I'm glad I, I see, I presume. Because once I, I went out there when it was out there. Now, is there a website if people with that information about the... Uh, we have a Facebook page. Oh, good. Okay. So we have okay. uh, Missoula Indian Center on Facebook. You just click like and you'll get all of the updates of what we're doing. And we're doing something. Boy, that would be a handy thing to do if you wanted to know constantly what was going on and available, especially if you're Native American. That would, mm -hmm. you know. Exactly. So I'm just going to recap. I don't know. It looks like it's almost 5 o'clock, but I, I don't know. Scott, is, he hasn't gotten all frantic. Yeah, no, he told us we've um, got like 30 seconds. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this event, Saturday, November the 15th. There's a Facebook found page. Excellent. Facebook page. Oh, it nice. is uh, Missoula Indian Center is offering a health care enrollment event at the Missoula Fairgrounds Home Arts Building from noon to 4 p.m. With mm -hmm. things for kids to do, mm -hmm. with... Lunch provided, noon to one. Lunch provided, free turkeys for the first 15 Insurance people. representatives for specific right. plan information. Mm -hmm. It's a great event. I hope everyone takes advantage of it. And I think that might be it. Yeah, so thank you, Dana. Thank you, Troy, for thank coming you. and waiting.
um, to be the last on, but see, you'll be the most remembered. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this edition of Missoula Live. We'll be back with you, Lord willing, in two weeks, yeah, November we 17th. So well today. Yeah. I'm glad about that. We're doing great. For MCAT, I'm Joel Baird. And I'm Kim Anderson. We'll see you next time.